Good evening. This is Cosmic Mama uh, and Terry Smith. And today we have a special guest with us, Amanda Joan of Heart of AwakenedAndUnite.com. I'm, I met you like a few years ago and got this um, in Florida and it, it was really good to see you. And so then again, we just met again. I mean, we just keep seeing each other now. We kind of just keep seeing each other. And um, we've been looking on your site and watching it blossom as you as you change over time because you've been working on some documentaries and things like that. And um, what I find most interesting is Amanda Joan of Heart. It's um complementary to Joan of Arc, right? And so yeah. you have a very powerful mission. It has to do with prophetic dreams and prayers. And you have a lot that you want to be able to share with people. And I can see it too, because I know even on the beach, you had to help me that day. I was feeling like not so good. And you help me out like you're just really quick with it like we're gonna we're gonna move this energy girl and um I just see you consistently being focused and I think we were talking about you this afternoon in the telegram group right Terry mm -hmm. and uh, right. I was just thinking you're you're this big picture person who wants to help people move along into you know this better space but I'd like for you to explain your mission in your words what is it and, and why is it that you're so motivated and focused? Because I, I feel like you're very focused. <laughs> I don't feel like there's ever like this time where you're like, no, I'm not thinking about this. Very true. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, gosh. Where do I start? Um, I had a vision from God many years ago when I got off of opiates and um heroin I was asking what my purpose was why I was here and I was shown a full-out vision from God of me doing a television show helping women uh, that were being trafficked um, transition their lives and uh, I had never looked back I got up of opiates and started documenting multiple major movements in history because I didn't realize how deep this was with the whole trafficking stuff and um uh it's deep and uh so i i just had to doc start documenting everything i felt like um i it originally started uh many years ago i have been a dancer off and on throughout my life not the kind of dancer you want your kid to grow up and be and kept seeing women's women in the clubs um, dying from all types of things. And uh, I just wanted to help these women. So I packaged treatments, they're called, to pitch to networks and had already, before, way before this, been already pitched to multiple networks um, this idea to help these women. And I made it for all the women in the sex industries because there's a lot of of them struggling in these industries. Um, so I made it for, you know, porn stars, call girls, uh, dancers, and sex traffic victims. And um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, then I was shown the vision many years later and I kept going. Uh, so it's it's a lot. I have a, a, a site, a website, all my content's on there. I don't have a lot of this content on any other platforms right now. It's all for free on my website at awakenandunite.com. TV with purpose, I'm trying to make purposeful television. And uh, I have a massive Inside the Great Awakening documentary uh, in two parts. The first part is called Spiritual UFO and Disclosure Movement. And there's over 19 parts on that. You can hit the X for join our, our list, but uh, you go down. But uh, so there's the trailer right there at the top. Um, beautiful trailer. It's a 13 minute trailer. I don't know if you want to play that at the end or something you can. But if you go down, um, I also had multiple other spiritual experiences and testimonials and been shown a lot. So I had to. Feel like, felt like I had to cover all of this stuff. 
And as it went down in history, I got a lot of this stuff on tape and the, some of the, you know, biggest whistleblowers exposing these different subject matter. So um, that one goes into SRA and to um, the QAnon movement and to traffic survivors, child trafficking survivors. Excuse me, hold on. I am so sorry. My nieces and nephews are here from swimming and yeah, so um geez. <laughs> um are you there? Can you hear me? Okay, so um yeah, that goes into all the all the fraud, fraud and more fraud. Uh, you know, this might be on YouTube, so I don't wanna say certain words on here. Lay down. Wow, you Sorry. got a lot of movies. How many do you feel you have on here? So that's that's a twenty part that goes into wow. all of this stuff. All this ties together into trafficking. I mean, if you go back, uh, they're they're trafficking through our judicial systems through CPS. Um, it's all with the battles in the courts right now with that. I mean, they're tied into the rings. Some of these traffickers are are tied in. To or had have opened our own CPS organization, so they're stealing kids, and it's federal for funding money, and we're we're it's global. We're trafficking global. Um, and then that is the UFO documentary. Um, I I've, I've had a lot of spiritual experiences. Uh, that that one you you can just well you can uh go X out of there and go to the different parts like you did on the first one. This is also 19 parts. I think this one is. So put, hit the little X in the corner or, uh, how do you get out of there? Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Oops. I don't know how <laughs> I can hear okay. you. You got, yeah, you got to oh, open up. You're, you're, yeah. you're, oh. you're hitting a lot of really good points. Um, because I guess the first thing that, you know, when you, when you talk about heroin and other drugs, I, I guess we were observing some documentaries the other day that talked about the secret government, um, experiments that they did. Right. And so mm -hmm. they actually, to the point where experimenting on people with these drugs, these same drugs that are now illegal to the point where they're crediting the government for starting the consciousness Thanks. movement because they were allowing these drugs to flood the system. It triggered different researchers and their research subjects into becoming this huge swell of spiritual community, you know, because if, if you're studying people, you know, doing studies on twins to see if their psychic connections work and they're doing all of this, they are actually, you know, everyday America wasn't having these drugs, right? Until, until they do this. So then now here you are, you have your own experience that triggers in you this connection to the divine. And now you see your purpose. Even to what you're saying about the, the trafficking, um, a lot of people would like to think, oh, it's rich people. And it's like, no, it's this multiple layers of scumbags. You know what I mean? Like there's HR is involved, you know, the, the, the management is involved and they hire particular employees as the little, little workers. But then also too, I, it made me think since you said about dancers and things like that, it made me think about also during that same documentary, they were, they were testing using sex workers to test this on certain men to see what the response is to these certain drugs. So there's like this big collaboration of this, this big underground organization that uh, they're not necessarily all working together for the same purpose, but somehow that one big system supports all of this, what you're talking about. It supports it's everything. It's all tied together, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, they're using, you know, the drugs to keep them dumbed down and dependent and, you know, it's all a revolving door. Um, 
Yeah, and even the opiate epidemic was all done by design. I mean, they made the pills um, unsnortable, and then everybody started shooting it up and then dropping like flies, you know? Um, it's all, it was just a push. They pushed it in the system. Just like right now, there's mass meth epidemics. You know, they're, they're making pills that are basically prescription meth. So now everybody's becoming meth addicts and they can get meth cheaper than their Adderall pills and whatnot. So it's the same thing. They're just doing it with that all over the place as well. So, so I, I'm, I'm just going to say, when did you get, you know, as you started working on this, did you get to a point where you thought, Oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? Am I going to, how am I going to navigate with this now? And, and how did you, you know, you, you had, you said you spoke with God, were you getting, it was your connection with your higher self and just sort of that intuition led you or were you with divine intervention? What, 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 how did you navigate through this? I mean, it's one thing to get this awakening, but now how do you how do you do it how do you know what to what avenue to take well then um even, well this, yeah even with that it's what did that look like what did that message look like what what did you see well, in so see, how did it for years i had the idea and package started packaging treatments and filming women in the clubs and got their perspectives and stuff and it was just a strong knowing that's all i knew i it's the only thing I felt guided to do was to do this TV show to help these women for years. And then, you know, I, you know, I've always been shown spiritual stuff throughout my life, you know, before my addiction, during my addiction and after my addiction. Um, but then when I got off of the drugs and was shown the vision, I was asking God, what is my purpose? Why am I here? I was going to go back. It was my third time off of opiates. I was honestly going to go back out and use because I didn't know. I wanted a reason to live. I didn't know my purpose and I wanted to know my purpose. And I I asked him, Can, do, should I still put time and money and energy into this TV show idea that I have? You know, please, you know, show me more than just this knowing that I'm supposed to do this show. Please, God, show me with my eyes so that I can see more than this knowing. And I, you know, ask this out loud. So when you ask, you know, questions out loud to God, uh, your mind's got an ego and your mind gets over that ego block. And um, you're, you know, you're acknowledging that it's something that is actually there. And so I asked these questions out loud and laid back in the bathtub and took deep breaths. And I was literally shown a full out clip of the future. I did not see myself. I was looking through my own eyes. I could see these women lined up in front of me, like on The Bachelor or those format reality shows that you see on TV. They all had brown hair and a nice olive skin tone. And to my right was a big picture window. And all I could see out this window was water. So we were in a house on the lake or, or the ocean somewhere. And um, I, I I could hear my voice. I could hear everything I was saying to these women. It was beautifully written. Whatever I was saying was like in the most beautiful words, like we're here to help you because whatever you're doing is not in integrity and we're here to help you change your lives for the better. And um, I literally jumped out of the bathtub and was like, holy crap, like, you know, and I I never looked back. I was so happy I got an answer that I could, you know, had a purpose for being here and a mission here and um, just started. I mean, I, I got a producer actually that came into to the town where I live and was going to help me to do the pilot for this reality show. And he gets here and he's like, you're in the heart of the heroin epidemic. This is when the heroin epidemic was on every newspaper every single day, you know, and he's like, you need to make the show about the heroin epidemic and then go into other modern moral issues like trafficking and stuff. And I'm like, well, shoot, I'd love to help people with heroin because I used to have a problem with it. You know, I have lots of ideas and tools to help them, but you know, it's, it's up to them to really, you know, change their lives for themselves. But so I just started documenting all these rallies and marches and all this stuff. Like I did over 50 events on the heroin epidemic and 
And I'm still actually, that's the one thing I do not have completed right now. Um, I'm, I've been, I'm on year two of just editing and in post-production, um, making a massive inside the opiate epidemic documentary that should be like in rehabs or something nationwide one day, like to help addicts with. So then, yeah, it just, then I just went on from there. I started having the, 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 the extra dimensional experiences. I saw a blue avian out my window one night, like Peter Pan, and, you know, it's like, what? And I didn't even know what a blue avian was. Like, I'm like looking at this thing, like it's got a beak for a nose, but it's got a human head and, and it's eyes glue, like, like glue, like ruby diamonds, like fiery ruby diamonds, like, and it looked just like Rati air on the, the, the Gaia network, uh, painting version of uh the blue avian that you see on Gaia network it was identical to a T and I guess that picture was drawn by an intuitive that ch that channeled that being and drew it but I I learned about Corey Good two days later and was I didn't know who he was I you know I believe that these are some type of maybe um maybe the seraphim angels that were depicted and painted as birds. You got the blue Kachina and native American text. That was a blue bird. I mean, this is all ancient time, uh, revelations coming forth, you know? Um, yeah. I, Ashiana Dean's book named the avian beings, like six different names, but, uh, seraphim was one of them. Um, yeah, and uh, I woke up one night and saw light tunnels that haven't been open since Atlantis. Uh, these beautiful golden tunnels of light. The earth is becoming multidimensional again. These light tunnels are being reopened up. I didn't know what those were. I'm looking at these things like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, thank you, God, for showing me this. What is this? The next day, I'm revealed light tunnels are being reopened up that haven't been open since Atlantis through just a random channel message. Um, on YouTube, just happened to run across about it, and it was like, okay, you know. So I'm trying to put these pieces together, and um, I guess another uh, primary purpose of the avian beings is to protect, protect and guard the horizontal ley lines that run east to west. Well, the largest light tunnel that I was shown ran east to west, and you could fit a car in it. And the avian actually appeared under, you know, to me underneath of where that is so i'm just you know these are completely different times i don't see this stuff all the time you know but i'm sh being shown this, this stuff here and there and here and there and then I, you know i'll be revealed most of the time you know within days or sometimes weeks or even months what these things even are i don't even know just praying for the more that God is for me. I'm always wondering about this force we call God. I've ever since a kid, that's all I wanted to know is about God and who are you? And I want to know more about you because it was hard for me. I read the Bible and stuff and it was hard for me to understand this. God is so controversial. One second he's just killing people. And then the next second he's like this loving, you know, God. And it's just, it was hard for me. So I started reading a lot of books and, you know, books on the different angels. I've had experiences with Archangel Raphael. My first time ex detoxing off of opiates, I was miraculously healed by Archangel Raphael. And or my mom prayed to him and our emerald green light appeared hovering over me. I was miraculously healed on the third day of, of detoxing off of opiates. And for those three days, sweating profusely, I was praying, God, if there's a Jesus, please let me be resurrected like Jesus. You know, please make this easy. Please, you know, help this to be easy. Let me resurrect like Jesus in three days, please, God. And that's all I prayed for those three days. And I was, you know, Raphael appeared on the third day and I was felt like a normal person again. And um, I even going into addiction, like I've always just been obedient to this you know, internal guidance that I had. Um, and it's hard for a lot of people to understand, but, um, you know, I, I wanted to help my family and friends and people that were, you know, already wrapped up in this because I had moved to California, I moved home and all my friends are hooked on opiates and I didn't know how to help them. And they were like lying and hiding it behind my back. So I kind of was like, you know, kind of joined the crowd to, 
to to try to understand it and try to help them and literally was playing Russian roulette with my own life to try to save these people, you know, and and um I'm very blessed, knock on wood, that <laughs> that uh that uh, most of them are still alive. I did lose one of my best girlfriends um to to fentanyl a couple years ago. And that was hard and I still think about her a lot, but you know, yeah. Tough. But uh yeah, so yeah, I've been I've had all these weird out of the box experiences. I don't know where you want to go. But so uh what I, I would like to ask is you you feel like you've been having that experience these experiences of these visions of things all your life when it came to getting involved in drug, drug you know the drugs or addiction were you trying to avoid any part of this or what was it that you were trying to escape from in the first place like i was i was mad i was i argued with god i felt guided to walk that path I didn't know how else to help. And I remember telling God, I'm not that stupid. I know this is heroin, you know, and everything inside me. And I and I walked that walk and, and he started showing me uh how people are being hijacked by lower energies. Um, because I all I would do when I would get messed up is I would pray because like I could feel stuff lurking, I could feel stuff, you know, and and so I would just be in constant prayer a lot of days um and um he showed me people are getting hijacked by uh shadow beings that they'll jump in your body when you're on drugs and alcohol um i uh, a friend of mine would drink and do cocaine and he i i it took a few times for me to realize what was going on but finally the third time of him you know very paranoid not himself in like a blackout um uh, I was shown I saw that it looked like the grim reaper just like sat within and around him and just sat within his body and he started snapped and he was just all of a sudden he's attacking me thinking I'm the police you know I'm like you know and when I realized this is the third time this happened but he started acting like that when I saw what's going on I was like Okay, you better. You need to pray to God and Archangel Michael to discard this thing. This thing's jumping in your body. It's making you act like a lunatic. I'm grabbing, you know, I grab my purse and my keys, and you know, I was like, I'm leaving, you know, my own house. <laughs> you know, he was actually renting a room in my house at the time in the middle of my addiction, and it was like after that, I was like, I got to get this guy out of here. I, you know, this is his war. He's got to fight. I don't want to. I don't. And then I shortly after that got off you know, got clean myself because I realized like, this is not something I want to entertain, you know, um, early in my addiction, Archangel Michael appeared to me, uh, when I could have took my own life pretty much, uh, I was about to do a two wig of a line that my body couldn't handle. And he appeared in the clouds of the sky, sword, shield, helmet, looking down at me, like, I am not happy about this. He, he just looked like a very serious man and uh he he had you know I was like okay I'm gonna be okay but you know these are I you know it's like wow God is real like wow um would um because you're so versed in the bible like was the prodigal son ever one of the stories that you related to uh the the prodigal son. So for me, um, like, like you, I understand you want to know where God is. You're looking for God. Like you want to always be in this place, right. To find God at about 18, 17, 18, I go to live out on my own and went through all the muck and mire with, you know, drugs and things like that. And then come back out to end up in college and then coming back home and going back into basically back into church again I felt like I had to go through the dark dark parts and see this dark side of life not in the mm -hmm. home of being sheltered by your family but really getting into the street and then actually learning this and I feel like I was allowed to do it because a lot of people if they do it they can't come out 
but and it's a lot like of you're us- allowed to do it so that you can experience it and now you can function helping people in a whole different way because you've experienced it you're not just this really nice girl who just I just really want to help people like no I've I've been to the dark side and I'm back and I can tell right. you how to resurrect yourself right. and I don't know how that do you feel like that's was an intended or um, destined to be this way purposeful part of my mission probably yeah because I intervened in a lot of different ways just you know um trying to keep my family and friends alive even though I was yeah. sick I was more of a functioning addict I wasn't like trying to kill myself you know right. uh, but uh you know I had to understand it I felt like I guess um so yeah, definitely like a phoenix rising from the ashes type of, you know, you don't know the, you, you don't know, you know, you got to understand kind of darkness and light both. Um, it's yeah, very complicated I because what I will say, like there was a time where I was such a heavy drinker, but because I was in the right place at the right time, my friend didn't get assaulted because I was there even as a completely intoxicated person to make sure that she, she had passed out in a place and I needed to, to, and I, I was, because I was there as this person is the heavy drinker, I'm there and I make sure that she doesn't get taken home by somebody yeah. and she's coming back with me. Now, if I didn't go that night, I'm really not sure how her night right. ended, but there's these times where ordained people could, people could look at the situation and be like oh Joan you know that's full of crap you're using drugs you're bad blah 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 <laughs> not really understanding like you being there is still the most light being shined in a really dark place like you were the only light in those dark places even as yeah, a participant yeah. on some level right God's children are everywhere you know right um and it makes uh, it you know, look at the people, people in the Bible. None, yeah. none of them are perfect, you know. Oh no. Oh no. We did a study I'm on the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. It's okay. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, uh yeah, it's 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 been a real real crazy walk in life um was there any fear in coming back and coming out because um a lot of times I guess we talk about change like we would like to change but then we we fear sometimes failure but sometimes we fail success or fear success were you afraid to be without that comfort of that you know moving away from the actual use into sobriety um, it took a lot of tries. Like it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. You know, I thought I'd, you know, I'd get out of it and it'd be easy. It took, you know, at least three times, you know, me really trying and, uh, yeah, I, it's, it's, you got, a, you got a lot of, I got a lot of wisdom to helping others with, the addiction and and that and just thought processes and dealing with things differently and you know there's so many things that I know now that I could help others that are struggling um hopefully get out of it if they you know are willing to fight you know because it's will will and you know it is a choice in the beginning but then it becomes no longer a choice but it is still a choice to get sober and you can do it and there is light at the end of the tunnel. You just got to trust and walk in faith and listen to your heart as your compass and um, do the next right thing every second, every minute, every day. And and I know you mentioned church and stuff. I, I did, um, after a few years of getting out of it, finally, I did start going to church and um, started getting all kinds of amazing prophetic words at this church that's so I do mind body soul workshops now. I I I did one at the full disclosure now event uh, down in uh, St. Pete's Beach, Florida. It was awesome. Um, so I teach people that and you know try to connect with God and get loving, encouraging words and share them with each other. But that 
I, in that time, I was kind of heartbroken, started going to church, and um, a lot of the, the different prophetic people in the church, just completely different people, said that there was, you know, they saw me as this horse in a race, and and the one lady said, you know, there's going to come a day that the gate was going to come down, and I was just going to be running, like in a race, and literally, I've been running for the last eight, going on nine years, filming all of these movements in history, and uh Another one of my first reading the prophetic words at that church was you're going to be shattering shame off of groups of women. Now, what better way to ex describe what I'm trying to do, you know, with the women, you know, I was like, what? So I just like kept getting filled with faith and going to this church. Um, my feet were actually anointed and covered in oil. I had brand new running tennis shoes with treads like that thick. And um, I went to go to, it was their second soaking, they called it a soaking in the presence of the Lord ceremony this church ever had. And it's called Bethel. It's in Middleburg Heights, Ohio. Um, and uh, I went to try to leave and the, and the floors of the church are carpeted. And I went to go down the stairs to leave the place. And the stairs have like rubber on them. And I started slipping and sliding and slipping and sliding. And I looked at the bottom of my shoes and I was like, Oh my gosh, something anoints covered my shoes in oil. And I like felt it. I wish I would have saved some of the oil, but I went two flights down and started like ice skating on the bathroom floor, freaking out going, there's something anointing my feet with oil. Something <laughs> my feet with oil. And I was like so excited because that's what I was going there for is I'm always praying for the more that God is pouring out, you know, and I got the more, I guess, you know, and, um, and these things are all like, if you look at ancient paintings and stuff and like uh, the Jesus that he always is in a blue orb. Um, I travel in a blue orb in my dream time, kind of like Corey Good, I guess, pretty much. Um, I, a friend of mine told me I came into his room in a blue orb one night and talked to him for a half an hour or an hour straight. And he is so real to him. He's, you know, was looking at the clock and he's looking at me and he's like, you don't remember any of this? And I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, but this, if you look at the, uh, some of the ancient Jesus, uh, paintings, there's always a, an oil in a little jar there's uh there he's always in a lot of the time a blue orb a lot of it has significance the the crown on his head i've seen the i have a three tier golden crown that's three foot above my head or so maybe two foot um but it's made of thorny golden light and it made three tiers and at the top tier it had a spinning ruby uh, diamond in it. And this Quan Yen looking being took it and turned the diamond. She goes, she's ready. And she pulled my forehead back down. This is biblical on the forehead, right? They're marked on the forehead. Um, and the, all the golden light went back into my head. So there's that. Um, the flaming heart in the center of the chest. And Jesus is the higher heart chakra. Um, you got the three fingers up and a lot of the Jesus as an adult, he's got his hands turned like this and he's got the three fingers up. Um, and then as a child in ancient pictures, you see him with the three, same three fingers up going like this as a little boy. And he still has a crown on his head a lot of times and mother Mary's holding him or, you know, and, and, you know, if you look at Horace, even he has the same three fingers up. Um, Horus and Isis and Roman um, ancient um, statues and things. Um, and then he's got the ball in his left hand. Now, the ball is always a blue ball. Um, so I was given that the infant of Prague statue, it's called. It's, it's There's a whole story about this um, infant of Prague. Uh, the little boy Jesus statue. It's in the Roman Catholic Church to this day, only because some man put it back together many years ago. Um, he was he had a church. Uh, was a pastor or something at a church, and the statue was in rubble. It was during wartime, and he heard the statue say, "Put me back together, and I'll grant you many blessings." He put the statue back together. That's the only reason why it's in the church to this day. But um. So I woke up with electric currents running from my armpits, down my arms and out my hands, but only these three fingers one night, middle of the night, I woke up 
Okay, got him electric. Thank you, got him electric. I'm thanking got him electric. I could have been having a heart attack. <laughs> I knew it was something because I had, at this time, already woke up with the star. David hovering over my bed. Um, you know, I see a lot of light stuff in my room and sparkles of energy and orb stuff. And um, <clears throat> so somebody gave me that little boy, Jesus glass statue like within a couple of weeks of having the electric current experience and I was like wow that's the same three fingers that I woke up with electric current you know like what the heck that's kind of weird you know so I kept this doll on my nightstand and I was like you know so happy about this doll and um I broke I knocked it off the nightstand one night and it broke off the hand that was holding the blue orb and I'm like ready to cry. Like, man, I just broke this thing. I was like so sad. And I picked up the doll and I'm like ready to cry. And I hear, I have this still small voice that's kind of guided me throughout my life, kind of told me things only when it's really important stuff. And it said, no, I'm giving this to you. And I'm like, you're giving this to me. What is this? And it, the, the orb was, you know, broke off and so I looked it up and the meaning of it is that they made the meaning that they made it mean, um, if you look it up, it means kingship. I'm like, okay, you're giving me this. It's kingship. You know, what does that mean? So I think it's like, it has to do with the Christ consciousness and stuff that a lot of us are going into this, you know, we're evolving our DNA is unlocking. We're going to be able to do greater works like Jesus type of stuff is happening to us. Um, and that, and then sh not shortly after that, but within the next couple of years, I started getting the blue orbs coming down. When I go to take a bath and pray and meditate, these blue orbs would come down and connect to my fingertips and I'll wave my hands around and they'll like stay connected like a balloon. And, you know, I'm playing with blue orbs now. I'm like, okay, I don't really know what this means. I'm just praying and, and sending out my love and sending out my light in the bathtub and this stuff's coming down connecting to me, you know? Had you ever seen those that these little statues? No. In what Egypt, in Egypt, there um, it's the two finger healing amulet. Wow. And that's what they relate this to. Wow. His fingers. Um, Who's the guy to the right? Is that still Jesus too? That. Um, I believe so. Well, it's. Jesus Christ as Salvador Mundi by Leonardo Leonardo da Vinci. So okay. that's who that is on the right. But um, okay. so it's also a mudra, and I've seen it in Egypt um in a cave, too. The Coptic Christians put it in a cave. Let's see if I go back down. If we go a little further, you'll see, you'll see even the Buddha. Yeah, there you go. The, the Buddha. The, yeah, there's so many people holding up these three fingers out. You got Hermes and Greek holding the grapes with the three fingers up. And Same thing. A friend of mine, this is her father. He was a teacher. Wow. A want, yeah, they're out in Cairo. Um, Ajraza wow. Ali, she actually taught me about that. There she goes. Sajrad Aswan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she teaches the method of healing with that two finger touch out in Egypt. Wow. That's great. I love it. Uh, see, as I'm saying this, I'm like, I know I just, uh, like an orb kind of made its presence known. And I was like, okay, I'm really supposed to be talking about this. <laughs> so as a, I was getting confirmation that this was an important topic and then you pull that up. It's so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people missing. Yeah, it. so and and I Jesus thing like him pointing up and down at the same time, and they kind of people are pulling so many things to make it mean what they feel it means, not really knowing right other cultures like we got to you know right because they're trying to make it look like oh it's Baphomet because he's doing the thing with his fingers, and it's like no, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, but Jesus has a three. He always has the thumb up too. So yeah. there's a difference there. But it's important. And um actually I you know, I do healing work on people. Um I I worked on a man at work. Uh he 
wasn't even to tell me one day and his whole face distorted. I saw this light language over his face and I was like, whoa, 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 sit down. What's going on? And he goes, well, I wasn't going to tell you, but I have a ball of cancer in my stomach. And I'm like, why wouldn't you tell me that? And he's like, well, cause I'm not going to chemo. I'm not getting it. I'm not doing anything. I already went through chemo. I'm not doing it again. You know? And I'm like, well, can I pray for you? So I prayed from that day, you know, a couple months go by, see him again, pray for, uh, actually, I saw an orb hovering in front of him as we were talking. I'm like, there's an orb hovering in front of you. And as soon as I said that, the orb came in front of his stomach, right where the ball of cancer was in his stomach. And I said, it just went in front of your stomach where you have that ball of cancer. Can I pray for you again? And he was like, sure. And so I put my hand on his stomach and you know, said some prayers. And um, he come back around a month or two later and goes, I went to the doctors to get my screening on that, you know, ball of cancer in my stomach. And he goes, it was gone. He's like, I don't know about that orb, but I know I was healed that day. So completely gone. He had him double check the screening on that and uh, it was gone and it's still gone. It's been like, that was shoot. So what that was five are your, years what are cancer your, free. What are your plans to help complete this? Like, are you seeking help or funding to complete, you know, because it takes a lot to do all the editing when you collect. It's easy to collect, easier, way easier to collect the data than it is to sort the data and, um, and edit. Yeah. Um, what are you doing to complete that? Are you, mean, yeah. Using a lot of my free time to finish editing um, the opiate epidemic documentary every second I can get. I'm trying, you know, working, you know, as many days as I can on it. Um, I am working with trying to get this whole thing out there to hopefully maybe to get some donations, hopefully to start going towards helping these traffic victims. Um, you know, if I can get some funds for this or some connections or some producers that are willing to help me or to help get the funds, which I'm working on right now, it is in the hands of, um, some producers right now, um, from the last Corey of, uh, Corey Good events, he brought in some producers looking for people's contents and stuff. So they're looking at it. I also have, um, uh, some other people, well-known people that I'm going to be getting into contact with through a couple of resources that um, can hopefully, maybe they can help. I don't know. Yeah. So there's a donate page on there. Um, I also have uh, prophetic healings, remote healings and stuff on that same page. If you go right back to up a little bit, I think private sessions, booking and events. So those are the next events I'll be at. There's one, my Nexus Live is coming up in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. Um, so you can go go down to that. Yeah. Uh, so those are the two events. If you want to book a session, you hit that button um, and reach out to me, uh, mindnexuslive.com, mindnexuslive.com. It's a targeted individual event trying to bring awareness to that whole realm because now we're all becoming targeted individuals. I have documentaries on that on inside the Great Awakening documentaries I've made. Um, yeah, Tyler's going to be there. Yeah, yeah, he had just sent that to me. Um, we'll and, go back to your page, though. Yeah, and I'll also be at the next uh, full disclosure now fulldisclosuremovement.org events down in St. Pete's Beach, Florida next year in July. I will also be there. And then I got these testimonials. I don't know if you want to read any of them, but they've got a lot of great ones at that last event too. Um, you know, a lady with a, with a cane, you know, walked in with a cane, put her cane down and walked the whole and the rest of the event without her cane. Another lady with booked for a surgery the next day, canceled her surgery. She, her pain was completely gone. Another lady's knees were healed. Just amazing stuff. So hoping to do more of that and get, get to do more of that kind of work. Um, 
on a regular basis would be amazing. Yeah, um, yeah, it's an exclusive website. By... Everything is here. Like anybody can. I mean, yeah. you're an open book with a little open book. I like this Omega sign. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not trying to create no re new religion or anything. I'm just, you know, it's, you know, if open a religion of love, a religion of love, let's, you know, Call upon that source that's within and through all things and pray and and go within, get informed on what our purposes and our missions are and, you know, be the change, be the love, be the light and, you know, pick a highest timeline that we can pick. Yeah, so I do Mind by Soul. It includes like drumming and some singing and then we do prophetic words and then we do healings for each other. It's really fun. It's really one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, go to the, you want to check out any of the other stuff? I go to the Republic. truth of content. I saw that. The Republic. The Republic is really important. So this one is how to restore Republic. There's just different uh, videos on that. Very important. These people are, you know, are, are doing great stuff. Uh, the bilateral social compact is what every state and county needs uh, to, we need to declare who the people are, who the people are not, you know, we're not a corporation. We have rights, all that stuff. We, it needs to be defined in your bilateral social compact for your county and your state, how to create lawful assemblies, a video below that. That is, you know, everybody's saying, start in your county, start in your county, but they're not telling you how, this is how you need to start your lawful assembly. <laughs> Um, and I, we have our own website in that little red tab underneath of that. And so these are the history on creating lawful assemblies. You can learn about the history and why, um, we need these. It's, it's doing what our four founding fathers did, you know, it takes three to five people to start. You build it up to 30 people so that you have the rights of a common law grand jury in your county. And, uh, you take your public servants out if they're not upholding their oaths and remove them. And uh, this is not only our duty, but our right to do this. So right now we're working on our health board. We're, they're trying to force fees upon the people. Um, so that was that last video there. Oh, um, uh -oh. We're removing them. But yeah, it's fine. Um, this is, yeah. So there's that. I was at the, the Capitol on that lovely day, J6. Um and uh, then you got to the capital and you're not a racist, right? <laughs> right. I'm like, I kind of try to understand the balance of people just lumping everybody who does one thing as like, I, I don't, I don't really even understand it. So I don't know. So I got a whole documentary of, it's a, yeah. like a nicer version of a documentary. All the documentaries you you see are very dark and it was a bad day but this shows all the beauty and all the love and all of us coming together in this it's a beautiful documentary i even climbed a tree and got the shots for you guys and everything. oh man yeah this is an amazing yeah. angle right here yeah i got some beautiful beautiful footage man i was all about you know and then you got uh targeted individuals this is uh desiree foley she's going to be at that mind nexus live dot com conference coming up in tucson arizona uh september 26th through the 29th or the 27th through the 29th i'm sorry and and um these those are self-assembling semiconductors that they're putting in people's bodies that self-replicate and um she goes on to tell her story it's uh we gotta wake up to this because we're all becoming these targeted individuals now because they're putting these nanobots everywhere Arrow dust, smart dust. There's many names for this stuff. Lucifer E's in the vaccines. And, and uh, you can even see it in the one below and the doctor's testimonials here. There's at the very end, there's slides and you'll see what's in those um, jabs. Um, and it's, it's, they're like amoebas, man. They're, they look like little evil parasites and that's what they are. It's horrible. But uh, yeah. You can keep going down and I don't know. Yeah, I got traffic survivors. I got them. Yeah, this Wendy is a good friend of mine. She's 
She's in a class action lawsuit for being trafficked through a lot of the motels. Um, Very big, the motels, people. <laughs> yeah. People don't understand that there's certain employees in place. They they have records and HR still hires them. There's yeah. conventions where they let people in the rooms. They set the rooms up. They lock the doors. And even employees can't go and see what's going on inside. There's people who, if you your kids are walking in the hallway by themselves, you know, there's people who's having their rooms entered into in these hotels. And uh, a lot going on in the hotels that does not get discussed in public. You never see it on the news, how someone busts into someone's room or how someone's kid gets snatched or how people are being videoed in the hallways um, and, and having sketchy people follow them inside these hotels is very serious. And uh, I'm just yeah. going to say this because I had an incident down here by Universal Studios where a man wow. in front of the store as if he was playing the lottery and I was babysitting this little girl and we were in the back by the meat section now. So he's standing there with his hands on his hip. You think he's the manager, his own black pants and a white shirt. And then when we check out, he's standing up front between the registers and the aisles. So he still looks like a manager. Then when we go get in the car, I'm putting the food in the trunk and he drives up in an Audi. So whatever it is, he's watching you when you get in the front of the store, then kind of follows you around maybe and then all of a sudden he was in the parking lot in his car trying to get my phone number and I'm absolutely positive he wasn't there for me I really think he was looking for a vulnerable woman with a child mm. that was foolish enough to not notice that he's following you around the store huh. and somehow make a move so this is real and I saw you had the information about the trucks and I noticed in 2020 Lots of trucks being pulled over around here. And it wasn't because of their tires. They weren't on the highway. They were on the on the regular 441. Then we got a, like a back road where you can go a long distance. And those yeah. trucks were being pulled over. Like every time you drove past that road, it was, it was always being pulled over. And these look like regular box trucks. So not seeing that anymore. Now that our friend's no longer there, you, you know, you know, 200 and, and about 220 um, executive orders that were put in place by Trump, 70% of them, or no, 70 of them were removed. And when I look at them, I'm thinking, can we, could we afford to lose any of them? Like they weren't just, <laughs> you know what I mean? They weren't about pastry. They were, they were actual good things. Right. And they were all deleted after he left office. So, and a part of that was, you know, dealing with human trafficking. Yeah, huge Without part. Seeing as much arrests anymore. How can you go from 119 employees in Orlando being rounded up to not pretty much nothing going on now? Right. So big sign. Sorry, I had to just put that out there. Yeah. So right here. That's amazing. Cause um this is this will go back to uh, Pinocchio, right? When the kids get labeled as bad, uh, mm. once the kid is labeled as they're a bad kid, like taken out of school or and then put into some type of foster care, all the people at foster care have to say is, "Oh, he ran away," because mm. you've already got a record of being a troubled child. No one is so concerned, right? And especially mm -hmm. if the parent is in any kind of trouble and they they have to do those monthly meetings, if they don't keep with the, up with those monthly meetings, then their mm -hmm. kid can disappear in the system. So, yeah, this girl is, this is her story is very sad right now. She still doesn't have her kids back and has tried everything. Um, can she find them? Does she doing. know where her children are? Yeah, her. Yeah, it's a long story. She's okay, she but they're drugging her and keeping her uh, drugged right now, and t basically telling her she's crazy and you know that she has to follow all these rules. And you know, it's a long story, but anyways, keep going. That's a horrible story. I, okay, 
horrible. Looming loss. Yeah, this lady, I sat across at a Reawaken America tour uh, event and sat down to eat and looked across, you know, she's across from me at the table and I was like, here, I, I make documentaries. And she's like, oh my God, God put you right in front of me. <laughs> she's like, I was just thinking I need to create a documentary and I'm like, okay, let's go shoot it. <laughs> oh, we wow. literally walked outside and shot her, her video right here, right then and there. And yeah, she's, she's amazing. Um, but she's getting grooming laws put around the, in different States that, that protect uh, the children being groomed from like teachers and stuff. Her child, her son was ch- uh, groomed yeah. by a, t- a male teacher. Kind of wondering why when we're in class, you know, when we went through this uh, pandemic, the kids were in school online, but parents were told to not be there for certain classes and stuff. It's really interesting. And um, just don't know why any adult is talking about their sex life or any any level of sexual participation that they have with children. Why are you talking to my kids about that? But I guess the door is open because sex ed starts in sixth grade. And once you put it as a part of a curriculum that the school it's basically like the school is now taking over as the parent and they're taking your parental rights and allowed to share all kinds of things that their kids don't need. They don't need it from strangers, you know? Right. And this teacher was trying to get the, her son to take pictures and all this crazy stuff. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, people don't money, get it. Like, there's money. people that, that look good and they look nice. There was a, a, a little teacher. She looked like a little Barbie doll and her husband was a sheriff and they got arrested out in Texas for animal acts and things that they did and put inside the food and gave to children and things that they have done to children. And this is a school teacher and her husband's a deputy sheriff. Yeah. Both very, doing very bad things that I won't even say. Yeah. But. I, it's going on in my town too. I met a young man that was same thing, bestiality porn. Uh, he said the informants at the police station are involved and um, some even, I think somebody at the sheriff's station even. I, I Yeah, it's it's a system. It's not. It, it's. I mean, the guy kind of. <laughs> he's not all. You know, he's got some mental issues and stuff. So it's hard to like. You know, it's hard to know if he's just. You know, something mental is going on, or he's telling the truth. But he's very convinced that he's telling the truth. Actually, he believes he's a target individual and has the voice, the voices in his head, which, you know, could be a targeted individual visual or you know that he really has mental disabilities so it's it's like it's, it's hard we got to really discern in these times about that kind of stuff like what's god and what's technology now you know what's demonic and what's technology now so we got yeah Ash, austin steinbar oh uh, this, uh, this guy up here yeah yeah it's, it's interesting what Q, he's saying what Q is. It's basically. Uh, awesome. All right. You got to gotta watch that one. It's about our. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to explain, but it's a it's a white hat movement, but it's. Uh, collecting data and using. Uh, it's, it's hard to explain. Algorithm basically QAnon is and used as a white hat operation, but they're basically some kind of way targeting individuals to get on that white hat operation path. And this guy couldn't figure out what his deal was. Like who 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 was he actually supporting? Because he he was everywhere doing everything all the time. <laughs> yeah. So and this guy right here. Actor, so it was like okay, what what is he? So he was the one at the Capitol, but he's also, I, I found him in Arizona here, and he's exposing why is there pedestals on the Arizona Mall, person all over the Arizona Mall, and why are kids disappearing from uh, Arrowhead Mall in Phoenix, Arizona? 
and so repeat exposing... that because your your volume went out. Okay, so he was exposing why is there pedo pedophilia symbols that the FBI called named pedo symbols on the Arizona mall. It's called uh, what did I just say? Hmm. Uh, it's in Phoenix, Arizona. It's a mall, so there's pedo symbols on it, and uh, Arrowhead Mall. It's called. Sorry. And so he was exposing that at that event. And then on the other si side of his sign, it says Q, something about Q and on. But yeah. Huh. That's Maricopa County. Oh, what a strange county. Hmm. Yeah, it is a black yeah, fraud there. That's where, uh... Oh, yeah. did I? I don't know where I'm at now. Uh, what can you see? Oh, goodness gracious. I found it in America. <laughs> I got to go uh, back to where you are. I don't know where I, where I found. Oh, goodness. Oh, is this? Okay. Is that it? Okay. I'm back. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> see what? It's different from, um, it's different from uh, using StreamYard. So it, it follows okay. you. Yeah. So there's that. That's where yeah. it's building. Hmm. Jody Aries, Maricopa County. So hmm, interesting. Um, a lot of bunch of news too. So nurses, a nurse was exposing the vaccine stuff there in that video. If you go down, I added uh, the geoengineeringwatch.org uh, video about the dimming and the. the geoengineering and how they're trying to dim the sun so i put his because i didn't ha i don't have any content on that yet so i want to make sure that gets exposed because that's another battle of ours they're poisoning us by spraying us every day um, yeah the sun is the enemy now mm -hmm. and that's awakening us as the sun they don't want you looking at it especially when it's low because it and you look at it in the sky during sunset they're doing it a lot during sunset hours to try to keep us dumbed down because it awakens you when you look at it when it's real low um you want to go back up to what other pages i got left there oh well i think we did them um, besides gear i think like, or gear, yeah okay yeah we did most of them the gear page uh just has some really cool gear you can buy i got a joan of heart uh t-shirt and we are the law now and we are the law now. We are disclosure now. We are the news now. We are the people with a capital P. Oh. <laughs> and stigma. Uh, and in case you don't get the website, awakenandunite.com. Yeah. With a purpose. Plenty of information there. Yeah, yeah. We are disclosure and stigma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terry, did you have any? Oh my! God. No, I've just but I'm finding um your information quite fascinating and and uh, um inspiring, and um thank you for 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 sharing with us this um your journey because um I think that a lot of people haven't been brave enough to pick up. Um, pick up the pieces and follow what they've been that that what they have been showing that, or they may not know how but you persevered right. and kept showing me keep showing me you know um the and and so you're inspiring in in that sense and and um people need to hear that and feel that from you so thank you thank you that's nice and I don't know if you had any any last messages that you would like to also. Um, for anybody out there struggling, keep the faith. Um, go within, get informed on what your purpose is. You know, if that takes going in the bathtub and laying there and trying to quiet your mind to hear God or going and sitting by a tree and just letting all your emotions roll into the tree into the roots into the ground and just praying for that source that we're all connected to that is of love that has the right answers for your life and yourself 
um, to guide you. Um, just try to keep getting information and then getting information on that information that you get and just, you know, pray without ceasing, um, you know, but it's within and through you too. It's not separate. It's, we are one in this source, I believe. I've seen how we're connected um, to this source through a beautiful rainbow. Um, and it connects you to all the archangels and to Jesus and to everything I was revealed later. Um, so, you know, we're starting to work in unity consciousness now. Uh, we're working in the record halls. It's called the Book of Life in the Bible. It's called the Halls of Amenti in Egyptian times, it's where all the records are kept. It's many people call it the you know, record halls of the Kashuk records. But I know that I'm, long story short, I know that I'm accessing those. And, you know, we just, we just got to walk in faith, faith and, and listen to our heart as our compass every second, every day, listen to that next right answer that you know, that you know, that you know, is the right answer. Not that other voice, that chatter mind, amygdala part of your brain that reasons with you. You want to get in your heart, send out your love, stay in the heart, stay out of the head, chatter mind, and then you start working in the centrum part of your brain. You're opening up the doors of the kingdom within you. You know, Jesus used to go and yell at the churches and go, and you guys are withholding the kingdom. You're not telling them it's within them. It's within them. You know, it's not separate. And 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 it's about opening up your hemispheres of your brain to being able to access this consciousness, getting fluoride-free water, eating health um, and awakening, not dumbing yourself down, you know, choose to be chosen and, and walk in faith and, and, and trust. And God will only light one step at a time, but you have to take that step before the next one can even be revealed. Um, but um, just trust, you know, and rejoice in your trials because they really teach you a lot of perseverance and a lot of faith. Mm -hmm. I like that. Choose to be chosen. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, um, that's pretty awesome. Um, so I just want to thank you because you're just consistently in this light of doing the right thing at the right time at, you know, and not saying that people are perfect, but you're focused. And I think like you have that energy that can help activate others and generate the focus that they need when they see your, um, your tenacity tenacity and stick to itiveness because to be able to collect all this data and uh, and just keep pushing through to get the projects complete because you've completely revised this website in the last two years or in the last year year and a half you completely revised it you've shaped it and organized it and and I know that you still have further to go but I'm hoping that the donations come in and you get the support you need to um get to that next level and that uh that you get the help that you find helpful people that can uh help you move things along but i kind of feel you you will right <laughs> kind of i know yeah just gotta trust it's hard you know and it's gotta it's blind faith um but it's, yeah it's always it's always has a purpose everything has purpose so always look for reasons why things are happening and no, you know, you only know your walk in life. A lot of people aren't going to understand it. I have struggled with that because like, you know, it's, you know, they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, you know, they, they're never going to understand it, but it's your walk and you got to walk in and you, you got to be obedient um, to what your inner guidance is telling you. And you know, learn to discern between what's, you know, love and the real source of this God and maybe what's technology or these other malevolent beings that are, you know, still trying to stop you. Um, so we got to really use a lot of discernment in these times. This is very confusing times and um, just stay in your heart. Best advice I could give. Thank you. 
awakenandunite.com. So the awaken and unite, and you spell that and all the way out, awakenandunite.com. And you can find all the videos, the information, the shirts, everything, um, ways to donate. And I just want to thank you so much for hanging out with us. And we'll say good night. Thank you guys so much. God bless. Bless you.